much easier for us to do it this way, rather than me trying to put this music in before. I'm gonna get this started too. Get me in the mood. Getting you in the mood. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> see the fro and the peck that goes in the fro yeah and welcome back to another episode of stories from the shed my name is adam and again with me this week is a man that tells me a sucker is born every minute but swallowers are hard to find <laughs> jake how you doing you make me look like a real asshole you know that <laughs> i've been waiting to say that to you all day i've been waiting <laughs> i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna get out of work i'm gonna tell him that this is what he's been telling me <laughs> there's gonna be a point where i'm gonna get approached and all these things are gonna come back at me and i'm gonna be like that was 20 episodes ago people are like oh hey adam nice to meet you i'm sad you have to work with that asshole there. yeah and they don't even know me <laughs> like i'm not this much of an asshole you make me out like the worst person on earth but that's it's okay great. it's great <laughs> it works i guess i mean i'm gonna keep them coming too i'll, I'll just i fucking bet you own are it. i'll just fucking own it, it is what it is <laughs> well jake how you doing man i don't know i feel like an asshole why don't you tell me how am i doing uh, it's better to feel like an asshole than to look like an asshole that's that for is sure very 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 true <laughs> how was your week how was uh, the last time i seen you go bruins right go did they win last night? they won last year? night we're nice. uh well i wasn't here last night i know well you missed it hey they won game one okay Woo! awesome nice so wait is that the semifinals uh, Eastern Conference Eastern finals. Conference. Yeah. Okay. So basically semifinals. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, sort of. Okay. So what's up? Oh, you know, living the life, drinking beer, hanging out in the shed. That's Friday. what we do. And we brought a friend back with us this week. Jurgen, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thank you for bringing these uh, delicious beers that we'll get into a, in a yes, bit. Yes. These are amazing. They are. Elder Barrel. Holy shit, it is Elder Barrel. They are delicious. So uh, how was your week, Jurgen? What's up since the last time you've come on? I don't know. Um, it was a pretty good week. Went to a concert. It was pretty, yeah. Who did you see? I went and saw Johnny Marr. Oh, okay. What is, I, I don't know who he is. What does so he play? So he was uh, the guitarist for the Smiths, which is like- Over my head again. Pretty much my favorite band. Were they oh, invited nice. to the Fire Festival? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was the Fire Festival, no. <laughs> Can we get Ja Rule on this? No. We... <laughs> I was not involved. Well, it sounds like you've you know, kind of getting a good jump on the summer. Yeah. Great, great. And uh, as far as I go, I've had a pretty decent week. I've uh, I've actually been looking at upgrades for the shed because uh, I'm looking to fix my porch. So I'm like, yeah, we could. It's about time we could do use a few some things stuff. here. We could use some insulation, even if we don't put it in right now. We could have it for the winter. We'll get that figured. It'd be out. really nice. It's still really cold. It is kind of <laughs> cold. It's, in not, here. It, it's not as cold as it could have been. There no. was one day that Adam and I were recording, and the nails that hold the shingles onto the roof they come through just a little bit on some spots and they were frozen on the inside oh my god nice. yeah and we had both heaters on i think it was like 40 something degrees in here that night usually when i'm in a shack freezing my ass off like that i'm, I'm drunk and I'm, enjoying it i'm drunk and i'm waiting for an ice fishing flag <laughs> let's go oh there should be a sound effect for that <laughs> i just gave it to you <laughs> so the beer we're drinking like we said is a uh, elder barrel it's a little bit different than what we normally drink this is a sour ale uh, and this is made with elderberries uh what made you come across this? I don't know. I was like, cut. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Whenever I'm ready? Okay. Yep. So yeah, I went into Rupert's on my way here, and I was trying to find something that you guys haven't had before, and this one kind of stood out. I like the bottle, so I got it. It is a pretty bottle. It's got a pretty label on it. I was just going to say that. I don't know if I want to drink it or shelf it. It's kind of cool. We'll drink it and then shelf it. Shiny, too. <laughs> Shiny things. <laughs> what are you and, What are you giving it for a rating, Adam? You know what? I, I I'm gonna bring it up to a three point seven five. Three point seven five. Yes. Yes. Nice. And you know why? Why I don't give it a solid four? We always kind of rag on you in your events. I had a rough night once drinking sour beer, and I'm like, man, this is good. But if I drink three of these, it might not be so good. <laughs> yeah, right. You might end up at famous, I, I, famous Dave sleeping in the parking sleeping lot. Sleeping in the parking lot. My mom is listening to this because she drove me there. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> but you know what, though? I do like sour beers, and this is definitely a good one. What do you guys think? Um, I'm going to go with a four because, I mean, this is really good. The last time I had a sour was over at um, Allagash down in Portland. I went on a tour. And they had some of these, they call them the cool ships, and they had a strawberry one, and it tasted like straight up drinking vinegar. Really? Oh, yeah. It was so bad. Oh. 
I guess, uh, not to keep going on and on about beer, but in Lewiston on Lisbon Street, there's a place called uh, Bare Bones. I guess they have a really good sour. Really? Worth checking out, they I'll said. have to go check yeah. it out there. Is that in the same place where um, Fuel used to be? It's in that area. I might yeah, it's the in same that spot. roundabout. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not the same one because that's where the, the new like burger place is, but it's like right in that same strip. I, I should go try some of these local restaurants. Yeah, it's man. It's so much easier just to go through the drive through LA, it's you know happening I mean? here. It's happening here. <laughs> it's Everyone's happening going here. to McDonald's. Speaking of what's happening here, Jake, we've gotten a number of emails this week. Uh, maybe we want to say thank you to everybody that's, uh, you know, responded to our Angela Palmer episode. Yeah, that for some reason blew up really yeah. big. I'm sure there's a million reasons why it blew up just because it's a kid in an oven. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. It's like, pretty intense. Yeah. I, I actually I was hanging out with someone this week and uh, someone in my family that had just randomly come across a post because I don't have my family on Facebook at all. And uh, they come across that post from the podcast page, and they were like, "Did you see this?" And they showed me this. I'm like, <laughs> "I wish you would know." You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You know, I uh, I didn't realize we were gonna strike such a nerve. Yeah, that that got really really big. I think my phone blew up for three days straight. Uh, we're still just getting from messages Facebook. On it's that unbelievable, one. dude. So that we yeah. appreciate that. We appreciate the emails. And yeah, absolutely. The, Thank uh, you for the emails. We've gotten a million suggestions. We have so many stories that we can be doing. Yeah, so we appreciate it. Keep them coming. Jurgen, what do we got going on tonight? All right, so we're covering Chad Gurney, who, surprise, is another killer that I know. What's with you? I don't know. It Why just, do you make friends with serial it killers? It just happens all around me. Yeah, Who's I outside the shed? <laughs> Hold on, let me go check. I think the headphones. <laughs> so uh, tell us about Chad. All right, so he's he's a guy that I, I met um, through a mutual friend. He used to work at Bull Moose. Um, oh, that's my favorite store. Yeah. I love that place. Yeah, and we kind of hung out a little bit off and on during high school um, into our 20s. Yeah. And he killed somebody. <laughs> oh, shocking. <Yeah>. Shocking. <laughs> so I guess we can kind of maybe jump into the Chad Gurney. Could you say that he was your buddy? Yeah, was he a friend, would you say? Yeah, he was, he was a friend. Like, I don't know. Like, it wasn't, like, romantic or anything, but we hung out quite a bit. We drive around, sure. hang, out, hang out in cemeteries, listen to The Cure. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, right? For those that got that joke, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so Chad Gurney, at the time of these events, he was 27 years old. Yeah. Uh, he had met the, we'll say the victim, at the age of 18. So he'd known her for a number of years. Uh, and he had met her in the Portland area in approximately around 2009. Yep. Uh, he met her at a tattoo parlor. Oh, nice. Yep. Great place to meet a chick. Yeah. Was he was he getting a tattoo? Was she getting a tattoo? Were they were they like coworkers type she, of thing? Do you know? She was getting the tattoo. I think he like either was getting one or like kind of hung out there quite a bit. Oh, okay. I don't know the total story on that, but he was at least at that shop a lot. He oh, was okay. pretty covered himself. So over yeah. over a period of time, they kind of built a, a fr I guess you could say a friendly relationship because Gurney uh, states that uh, he didn't really consider their relationship to be an exclusive type of thing yeah uh, but he did say he had pretty strong feelings for her nonetheless yeah. mm -hmm. um uh, i guess we'll find out kind of later on she maybe didn't feel exactly the same as he did uh but in may of that year gurney took a trip to canada i love canada sassé bon <laughs> bring on the putin <laughs> well ho hopefully he had some there it was probably his last trip there oh, but geez. <laughs> oh geez here we go <laughs> Now, checks. after he returned to Portland on around May twenty on May twentieth of two thousand nine, uh, Gurney then asked the victim, uh, "Do we know her name? Is this somebody that you knew even?" No, I didn't know her. Her name was Zoe Sarnacki. Zoe, yeah. So he asked uh, Zoe, uh, if she wanted to take a trip with him, but she declined. So I wonder why. Hey, let's take a trip. He probably offered to pay. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, he even uh, we're going to get into more where he had some extra cash, but he right. was even planning a trip to Thailand. So yep, that Scotty, was the trip. That was the trip. That okay. was the trip. This is an exciting guy. Hey, let's go to Thailand. Right. What do you say? I would go. You're going. Absolutely. I'm going. That Jake's getting cool. armed here with a crossbow. <laughs> what the fuck, Jake? Adam bought this little this little metal bow. It was Don't like six it bucks. At yourself. It, I'm not put. <laughs> I have a death wish. <laughs> uh, no, it, it shoots um, toothpicks. <laughs> Boom. All right. I'm all right, on. cool. You can like protect us from, from all these serial killers and the... stuff that follow me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I guess so. At least we have something. Right? Now, um, Zoe had told Gurney. I, can this I have is... the blow dart gun? 
Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God. So uh, Zoe had told Gurney that while he had, had been gone uh, to Canada, she had been intimate with somebody else, which would make sense as to why she wouldn't want to go to Thailand with him. I mean, right? I, I guess so. I mean, so, maybe yeah. she's like, you know what? I'm not that serious about this enough to say, yeah, let's go spend thousands of dollars on a, on a trip right. together. So I guess it's not that odd to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it was anything like serious at all. I think it was just more of a casual, like having fun type of relationship. No, oh, in that case, so. then Thailand it is. Yeah. The food's great. I agree. <laughs> so where does this take us? All right. So let's see here. On May 25th of 2009, the victim spent the day at Gurney's apartment. She apologized for having been intimate with someone else and took an afternoon nap in Gurney's bed in the apartment's loft. Oh, I cheated on you, but can I can I take a nap yeah, in your bed? Yeah, but they weren't exclusive. They weren't exclusive. They, they were just exclu- hanging out. Okay, yeah. so if that's the case, why is she apologizing? Oh, that's because he's clearly upset. He clearly I'm sure was he was mad. very upset. Cause, cause well, he, I guess he stated that you know her, her he, name he is victim. Of course she, of course he was upset. <laughs> I know. Yeah, don't become victim. But yeah, don't be, don't change your name to victim, yeah. please, or have it changed for you. But <laughs> but uh, anyways, it, he he did have strong feelings for her. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is something that he stated. I mean, obviously he cared about her enough if he's going to invite her to a trip to Thailand. Right. right. So yeah, you know what? You can stay at my place for a while, and while well, you figure things out, that kind of thing. I'm sure. You know, maybe. So. While the victim was lying on the bed, Gurney grasped the victim by the neck, headbutted her, and strangled her until she was dead. Jesus. Gurney performed a sexual act on and then decapitated the victim's body. Why did he do it after she was dead? What is it what is it about that? What is up with that? Yeah. Was he a big guy? I mean, not like he was probably about like Jake's size. Yeah. Yeah. So six feet two ten ish? I about ish. Yeah. Okay. Just like, you know, average okay. dude. Yeah, basically. Thanks. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> yeah, this is strange. You know what's strange is that we come up with this a lot in a lot of our stories. This like whole like necrophilia, necrophilia type. thing. It's, like, yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's like, oh, I got this dead body. What do I do with it? What do I do with it? I'm how about fuck it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what else to do right now. <laughs> Uh, and then they realize, <laughs> right, that they have a dead body. And then what happens next? Right? I mean, like, even Ed Kemper was into this. So, And, and you love Ed Kemper here in the shed. We love oh, Ed. I know I do. We love Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, if you're somehow listening to this, we love you. I love you. <laughs> Call me. So what's up next? What, what goes on here? <laughs> so Gurney then showered and changed his clothes, drove to the gas station, obtained a container, filled it with gas, Uh-oh. and brought it back to his apartment. Gurney poured gasoline on the bed, the victim's body, and all of the loft, and then ignited the gasoline. Uh, Gurney also poured gasoline in two areas in the lower level of the apartment. So there's some stuff missing from this that I actually know as well. Yeah, what's up? So the decapitation was done with some sort of samurai sword that he had in his trunk of his car. Wow. So he's a ninja. Yeah, I guess. I mean, he was doing some sort of martial arts once he got back to the Portland area, but it was some sort of like ninja sword. Okay, so question. Is this something, is this like a novelty type of samurai sword that you'd buy at like a like a weird store at the mall? You know what I mean? Where I, they sell I, knives and bowls and stuff? It had to have been pretty sharp. Well, I would imagine, but I wonder like, because you see stuff like that for sale at these really odd little stores. Just, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Sharp oh. enough to take a head off, Jake. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's, ugh. Yeah. Wonder, that's terrible. Wow. And then right. before he went and torched the apartment, he put all these weird, like, religious effigies all around her body to make it look kind of ritualistic and. Like a, like a sacrifice? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. So yep. it's even weirder than, and then I think it's almost like if he did that, then he must have been, like, out of his normal state of mind and then right. came to him and been like, I got a fucking body here, man. I got to burn this place down or do something. And that I just seems like once he got the gas and all that, it was like a, maybe a lapse of reasoning. Like, right. Oh shit. I got a body here. We got to do something with this. Yeah. So this is definitely uh, I, pretty normal talk. So let shed, me fuck it first right? and yeah. then I'll burn it to the ground. Yeah. It's terrible. It's just like, it seems like this happens all the time. So what he ends but up, it really doesn't. At some God. point, I think he starts to panic because then he collects a, uh, his bag and a passport and all these other things that he he has, his laptop mm-hmm. and probably most important things. 
Uh, like his empty shotgun. Yeah, he was probably planning on getting ammo for that or something yeah. at some point. Probably didn't yeah. have any because I'm sure he would have brought it. Right. Uh, that probably would have made the whole thing easier if he had had ammo for it. Throws all this stuff in his truck and does what I would do if I killed somebody. Goes to the beach. Can you not give away your your next, <laughs> your, your plans? He, like, I mean, he did, though. <laughs> I, he goes to Old Orchard Beach. I'm like, what are you doing, man? What are you th- Why not, though? Why yeah, not? Yeah, why not? Why, I've I, already done this. He's had a stressful week. Give him, a, give him a break. You know what I mean? He just wanted that last chance at Pure Fries. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if I was going like, to go to jail, that's the, lo- that's the first place jail. I would go. He even stops at the ATM. Yep. So he uh, stops at an ATM. And, and he, he was smart. He paid cash for his hotel room, and he stayed for two nights. Supposedly. Makes you wonder what kind of a hotel this is. You can pay cash. That's I'll fine. I bet you it was right right by the pier or like right on the water because those motels you can you can get for two nights while he's at the motel he even asked the uh, clerk for suggestions as to where he can eat and uh, he uses the hot tub i mean after a hard day <laughs> after a hard day <laughs> it's a pretty hard day you that, gotta just let your hair down and go in the hot tub that reminds me of this vine back when <laughs> vine was a thing it's uh it, it's this guy that's filming two other people like i don't know 100 feet away and it's two guys sitting in the hot tub, and the guy that's narrating goes, two guys sitting in the hot tub five feet away because they're not gay. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Anyway. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't oh, either. I wish you did. I wish we had a Jamie to pull that shit up. That'd I be know, great. Right. So, so as this is, uh, well, as he's making his way down, I guess, to Old Orchard Beach, the Portland Fire Department responds to the uh, apartment fire. And this was about, what, 6.30? Yeah, 6.30 p.m. Uh, and this is where they discover the victim's body. Because as we know, gasoline is not... I, I've, you know, you watch enough of this stuff, and right. people always are like, oh, we scatter gas. Seems like these houses, these apartments, they never fully burn down. And like the body doesn't fully burn at all. Like, no. It takes a lot it does. to break down a body. Because even when you're cremating, it still doesn't totally break it down, and you get to go in some sort of coffee grinder. Listen, guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about killing somebody, don't do it. But if you do do it, like, don't oh, light it on fire. Very much don't fucking that. light it on fire with gasoline. Do something else. Thank you. Feed it to pigs. <laughs> Feed it to pigs or something. Chop it up. Co- turn it into steaks. Something like that. Now, uh, so Gurney, while he's down, heading down towards Old Orchard Beach, he calls his neighbor. He's going to throw... Feed it to the homeless. He's going to throw a little curveball here, right? And he tells his neighbor that he uh, is heading to the Lewiston area, which, if you're not from here would be in the opposite direction mm-hmm. of Old Orchard Beach. Old Orchard Beach would be south, and Lewiston would be north of this area. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Jake, this will take us to the next day. Which is? May 26th. May 26th. Right. Okay. In the early morning hours of May 26th, he calls his friend. Um, calls him on his cell phone. Go ahead, Adam. I think a lot of his calls after this probably were collect. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but he sounded calm, rational, kind of just, you know, I guess sounded like his normal self. Uh, just says, hey, you know, uh, I'm down Old Orchard Beach. Killed somebody. Want to come hang out? Yeah. <laughs> Pure fries are good. Pure fries are good. <laughs> Fried so, dough is fucking on point. He just you Fried know, dough is disgusting. What? <laughs> oh, what I'm he ends so up upset. doing is he tells his friend, I guess, the situation that he had murdered Zoe and right. uh, what, had, what had occurred. Um, he's, he was saying that... Uh, the victim had done something to hurt him, which was probably just the events of right, the alleged alleged whatever you whatever would call you want that, to call that, yeah, cheating on somebody you're not exclusive with, right? The alleged hookup that he got like all upset about. So, what do you think of this here again? What's up with this? I don't know. Like when I heard all of this initially, um, my friend Amanda called me, and I didn't believe it so much at first, but then things started to make sense. Like I like I had lost contact with him for a while and then we started talking after he went into jail. So, yeah. So did he seem like somebody that would do something like this to you? To me, no. So I never had any issues with him. Like every single interaction that we have was, al- was always pretty like gentlemanly. Like we hung out. He wasn't creepy or anything. But that is not the experience that I know other people have with him. Um. Because, Jurgen, you've known other people in these kind of situations. Right. How would you rank this guy? Just as normal as... Oh, I can't say really as normal because, I mean, he was normal with me, but, like, I'm pretty weird. But I know that he was kind of an asshole to a lot of his, you know, girlfriends. Because that's what, you know... Yeah. I, I've told people... But he wasn't great with women. I've told people we were going to do this story, and a lot of people were like, yeah, that guy's kind of, uh, you know, was a douche. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean that's... I, I heard it that way. Like, wow, but... You know what? Maybe you saw a better side of him than a lot of people right. saw. Right. 
I guess would this probably be a good time to take a quick beer break, Jake? Yeah, probably. A All good right, time. yeah, we can yeah. get in. We'll be right back. Couldn't help yourself, Jake. No, I really couldn't. <laughs> I really, really couldn't. We have the one on the break, and then I come back and have another one. He's ready. He's ready, this yeah. guy. What can I say? Yeah, Jake's exactly. not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. <laughs> Fuck that shit. So while uh, Gurney was on the phone with, with his friend, he ends up getting uh, pulled over. Uh, Portland patrol officer for a minor. This was a minor traffic accident. Well, a traffic stop. Traffic yeah. stop. Yeah, so what happened? Traffic you, accident. Do we know anything about this? I don't know what it was. I, I don't know if it was because he was on his cell phone or he ran a red light or something. It was just he got pulled over. His friend did. So it was something really whatever. Yeah, tri- maybe he had a light out. I don't know. I'm good at that. So Gurney asked if his friend uh, asked his friend to explain to the police officer that Gurney had been in an accident. And might not be meant all mentally there. What exactly does this mean? All right. So before this, he was down south at, um, I believe it was Liberty College, and he was playing for a lacrosse team. Um, and on the way to like a match one day, um, the team was in like one of those like giant passenger vans, and a like eighteen wheeler hit it, um, and it really really fucked Chad up. Like it basically almost tore him in part. Yeah. So we got a huge settlement from yeah, this. Yeah, he was I'm like assuming. really fucked up for like I mean, even after. So what's what's happening here is the friend's getting pulled over while yeah. he's talking to Chad. Right. And 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 Chad tells his friend while you're dealing with the officer, tell him this. I. It looks like that's that. That's kind of how I take that's that. That's how I'm taking it. Jake, okay. is that how you take okay, it as well? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah. And that makes me have a really, really important question. What does this have to do with anything when you're just getting stopped on a minor traffic violation? You're not even getting stopped. The person you're talking to is. Right. Hey, so tell why, this. So, no, so, okay, so you're already implicating yourself on something or I you're making it seem really sketchy at least because that doesn't need to come up at all. You know what I mean? I believe he was just turning him in, really. Really? Yeah, the friend was turning him in. Wow, what a wow. weird time for that to happen. I mean, this right. is this is happening during a traffic stop. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Is that that's when is that when he got arrested in the traffic stop? No, no, no. Chad's not in the car. No, he's talking. So what's yeah. happening, Jake? Is he's in Old Orchard Beach? Okay, I'm assuming. At so his time. friend is talking to him on the phone, right? And it's, his friend gets it, pulled over. He had just confessed yes. to his friend what he had done, and and his friend's getting pulled over at the end of the story. Uh, 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 well, so, so the friend's getting pulled over as and uh, he's on the phone with Chad as and he, Chad t- and he tells him to tell the cop. Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. What the fuck? I know, I know. That's why it's, it's like weird. it's so what? weird. That's why it's like I have to clarify this. Yeah, that's oh exactly what God. I believe went down. Because I feel like a lot of people might have listened to this and they'd be looking like Jake right now, like, what the fuck are they saying? What right. are you talking about? Why would you do that? Chad's on the phone with the friend, confesses as this is happening. Friend gets pulled over and says, "Hey, while you're dealing with the cop with your little traffic thing, tell him what I did, and 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 say it wasn't, what? I wasn't in my right state of mind. I wasn't myself, Holy kind of a thing." Holy shit! Why wouldn't you just go down yourself? Scared. There's a hot tub. I wouldn't want to leave the hot <laughs> tub either. <laughs> Let's be real here. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up doing that though, Jake. He does end up turning himself into the police. Now I don't know if it's to the old Orchard Beach police if he goes back up to Portland. Do you know? I, I'm not sure. I imagine like either that or the state wouldn't go get once we get him. Yeah. So yeah. he ends up uh, somehow he ends up turning himself into the police. Uh, he actually and he admits to the uh, the authorities that he knew that killing Zoe was wrong. Uh, of course. It, of I, course. My bad. Oh, uh, Mavi, sorry. <laughs> So, which, you know, uh, a lot of times these people, they, they, it sounds to me like it was an act of anger real quick right. and crime of passion, instant if you will. remorse mm-hmm. after, after doing something like this. But it does sound like a guy that was definitely kind of frightened. Uh, Gurney also uh, consented to a search of his motel room and his vehicle. So at this time, I'm feeling like he's willing to cooperate, he turned himself in. He's just, so this ended real quick. Right. So how Thank soon God. after? This was just a couple of days. I don't even know if like it was the same day. It might have been the same day or the next yeah, day. Yeah, same day or next. I don't think he made the whole two days there. And this to kind of fit with, you know, to go oh, back to... what a to, waste of money. But to go back earlier to what we were saying where a lot of people told me 
this guy was a, a douche and I don't really I'm not really surprised to see mm-hmm. this, but you're you saw a different side of him. So right. to you, you might be like, you know what, I can see him being, you know, uh, maybe of doing this and then feeling remorse. Right. And, and saying, like, you know what, I yeah, gotta turn at least, myself at in. At least the kinda... Chad that I experienced, if you will. Now, as this is happening, do you know he had anything to do with it? No. I mean, ha- so have I you didn't... heard anything? How long after? It, like when it hit the news. So I guess within days. Within a couple of days. Yeah. As soon as, you know, this happens, he turns himself in, his face is all over right. the uh, the media. Yep. And what are you thinking? Um, I'm like shocked and like this was like the first time I knew anybody that had killed anybody. So I was shocked, distraught. It was terrible. So this was before um, Buddy. Yes, this was before Buddy. Wow. Okay. Yep. Yeah, super interesting. It's uh, so... Uh, the police, they end up, you know, like I, like, like I stated, he, he's like, you know what, check my hotel, check my car. They end up taking some of his stuff. They grab his laptop, uh, which was on sleep mode. I don't know if that's important to say or right. not. Right, I don't know. Uh, but it was. Uh, that was recovered from his room, his cell phone, of course. Uh, the, this device did have access to the internet and, you know, was able to text people and stuff. So I'm sure they were looking to see what kind of communications he had uh, leading up to this event and afterwards. I love how they say... Um, a cell phone, a device with internet access and text messaging functions, as if that's like a selling feature of the phone. <laughs> At the time, it wasn't you know totally I mean? a thing, though. Yeah, right. Are they talking about like a BlackBerry 8800 or whatever? You know what I mean? I had like, a BlackBerry. I had a million BlackBerries, <laughs> yeah. but I just love how they had to clarify that just because of the time the time it was, 2009. Anyway. So as this happens, he's obviously taken into custody, mm-hmm. and they're doing in, uh, they're going to do a full evaluation of his mental health and right, stuff. Yeah. And I guess this at this point in the story kind of takes us to that accident that you had told us about. Yep. Uh, so maybe you want to touch on this. Sure. So in 2005, three months after the vehicular accident, which Gurney had been seriously injured. Um, and this is the lacrosse. Yes. Yeah. Yep. An examining physician found that Gurney had a number of cognitive defects. Um, so problems with attention, memory, language, math. Uh, but no psychotic symptoms. That's me well, after good. three of these beers deep. Right. I'm feeling that way too. So <laughs> Well, that, that's a good thing. We don't want someone with psychotic symptoms. That's right. right. That's true. Yep. And in 2007, Gurney was treated for anxiety and depression and diagnosed with organic personality disorder. Okay. Well, aside from the org- organic personality disorder, that just sounds... Like me? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Right? Right. I'll take it. Right. Yeah, I mean, why, why, anxiety, why you, depression. Why are you to take shots at me like that? Yeah, <laughs> right. It, it all sounds fairly normal to me. Who hasn't had a little anxiety or depression in life? Exactly. So, everyone goes through shit, and it's okay to feel sad sometimes. Yeah. Right. So he was also diagnosed with PTSD, but there was no evidence that um, thought disorder or delusions were a thing. Well, that's good. And yep. I wonder what would have brought on his PTSD. Um, I imagine the accident. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'd probably freak out if a semi hit me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. that's that's totally a reasonable response, right? So, are we, what we're getting at is that this accident not only did it change his, his life, you think, in the short term as it happened, but you think it might have changed his 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 brain structurally. Like, I is mean, that definitely. what they're getting at? Yeah, is that what we're getting at with? What that's what I think personally. I mean, you have like all these things come up. I mean, he was probably a little nuts before, um, but. Yeah, I mean, if you get hit by a semi and then basically get torn apart, and he was in pretty good shape before that, and then he basically, I don't know if it was his arm or his leg almost got, like, completely, like, ripped off or did and was reattached. Wow. Um, It was pretty gruesome. Like, they had his, like, arm all in pins and crazy stuff and rods everywhere. Um, You know what probably helped? Just because he was in such good shape before, it probably helped him a lot in his recovery, too. Yeah. Imagine if he hadn't been in good shape beforehand. Now, uh, like we said, the doctor said there was no evidence of thought disorder or delusions. Uh, Some people that I've talked to have said that he used to talk to himself and all this stuff. But a lot of times people will say different things. Right. Just because something like this happened. Who knows? Oh, we got an email. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Oh, (laughs) it's just YouTube. It's just Uh, YouTube. Oh, just YouTube. Freeze tag one, two, three, four, five has subscribed to your YouTube. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Anyway, moving on. Uh, the doctors did note, however, that he continues to have significant distress in his relationships towards women. Right. This kind of had Kempery. I mean, a little bit. Like, and the things that I had noticed when we would talk, 
mind you, it was like never anything like romantic or anything, but he would constantly complain about like his girlfriend's cheating on him. But from what I learned from everyone else, it was very much the other way around. And like he would terrorize them. Really? Yeah. And it's it's not just like one or two. I've heard this from like a lot of people. And at his trial, a lot of his like exes ended up testifying against him. Wow. Yeah. So it's really like a weird like juxtaposition of like what I experienced and what was really going on. Your relationship with him was strictly on a friend basis. Yeah. So the way he would react with the interact with you would right. might be totally different than the way he would interact with somebody in his, in his home. Yeah. That he's or like someone that's like there all or, the time. Yeah. That's there all the time. Right. Right. It's kind of interesting. You almost wonder if, you know, if he would have been around you more often, if you would have seen a more aggressive side of him. It's possible. I mean, like, he was really big in, like, the hardcore and metal scene, and I was told he was rather violent there. Um, I Bring mean, all at least, the hate music. Right. I mean, like, I went to shows and stuff, and I saw it. I mean, everyone kind of is, but. So after his accident, from what I understand, is he was heavily medicated with uh, strong pain medications. Mm-hmm. Uh, pres- prescription narcotics. Right. Uh, which he was effectively weaning himself off of by March of 2009. Right. Right. Yep. So it's that's crazy. Uh, and I'm sure that can affect you in a number of ways as well. Right. Uh, he was given the prescription for different pointless pain relievers, or less potent rather. Less potent. <laughs> wow, too much sour here. Right. So he needed a little something with a little extra kick, right. which I clearly don't need right now. No, you don't. <laughs> you need a bottle of water. Bottle of water. So he, uh, yeah, so this guy was in a lot of pain. And right. so it sounded like he had a long recovery. Um, but again, according to his friends, there was no unusual signs right. in his everyday events. And you would agree with that. So pretty much according to his friends, it was not unusual for Gurney to see signs in everyday events, um, <laughs> both before and after his 2005 accident, um, and to attribute importance to those signs. And like, I can get behind that. I do that all the time. Okay, so, well, are we, are okay we... well, he sounds like someone who just did a bunch of LSD. No, no, like, no, I've discovered no. Life. Jake, this is real. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, this guy had was in an accident. The, he, things changed for him afterwards. Right. I don't. You know, know. I, I do this like all the time. I find like weird meanings and like songs and so to, weird stuff. And he, he has his accident, yeah. and he's seeing things within things. Yeah, mm. you know, it's beyond looking up at the clouds and being like, "Oh, I can see Abraham Lincoln's face in that." You know, it's he's seeing things and things, right? I mean, right. Uh, can you explain a, a little bit beyond what I'm saying? Right. So, like, I even like experienced this with him. So. Chad and I like reconnected when he was actually in prison, um, writing back and forth. I went to visit, um, he call a lot. Um, and we both had this like weird thing with birds. Um, so he was kind of there for me, like as a support person when my, um, Oma passed away back in 2012, my grandmother. And like, we talked a lot about that. We chat a lot when I was like hanging out at hospice, um and then like i started seeing like weird signs after directly after she passed because i was there of like birds and cardinals hanging out in the window until they came to get her body and that's a pretty common yeah. thing yeah actually i've heard that from a lot of people where when something when somebody passes these kind of things happen right but in chad's case I mean, i'm sorry i said chad yeah chad yeah chad i was thinking of somebody else but in his case mm-hmm. he it, and it's an ongoing thing, right? Right, yeah. And he, like, he had the weird bird thing, too, like me. And, like, one time he, like, smuggled me a feather, like, from the yard and put it in an envelope and sent it to me. <laughs> but, yeah. What did he mean by that, you think? You know, I don't know. I think probably, you know, whatever we were talking about before, but. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was in pretty way, wild. Yeah. That's pretty interesting to have that kind of connection. I have it somewhere still at my apartment, but, yeah. So how do these signs, you think, kind of play into this event? Because they do take note of that. Right. So I don't know whether he was seeing signs and that told him to kill Zoe or not. I imagine so, because that's basically how he's living his life at this point. But I wonder yeah. if he continues to see signs. If, if I'm sure he does. That... Yeah. Now, a lot of people would just quickly dismiss this as being like, yeah, that's uh, signs of schizophrenia. No. But that's what a lot of people would say, though. I mean, I guess so, but I see signs and stuff. People, and I'm not schizophrenic. But people are real quick to jump right, and say something yeah. like that, especially in a prison setting where he's at right now. I'm sure he's being heavily medicated. That's got to be what the doctors are saying. So, so I mean, kinda, I don't know, I know how far ahead, ahead we want to get here, no. but like I know if we're, like when I went to see him, he definitely was playing it up because he wanted to be moved into a psych institution. Hmm, that's interesting. Is it easier in a psych institution? Yeah, and then he want, he also wanted to be moved to like a psych 
institution in New York so he could get like conjugal visits that was brought up. So I really think to a degree he was pushing the crazy. I wonder if he was pushing uh, it yeah. at this time. I think he was his his, uh, his trial because we're kind of getting into the pre-trial right. part of the story. So you think he's probably amping it up? I mean, I, think I, so. I mean, yeah. if you do a crime like this, why wouldn't you? I mean, to try to help yourself out right. at least it's probably even something a lawyer would tell you as advice. Mm-hmm. Play play this up. So what goes on as they head into the uh, pretrial events? All right. So let's see here. Gurney was charged with one count of murder and one count of arson. He entered a plea of not criminally responsible by reason of mental disease or defect at his arraignment. Gurney underwent a three-stage examination and was assessed by several psychologists and psychiatrists. Gurney's explanation for killing the victim changed over the course of these interviews. But you know what? When you're asked something repeatedly, Mm -hmm. your stories will eventually change slightly a little bit right mm-hmm. i think a lot of times so take that however you want yeah um so he ends up i, I he, he ends up meeting with his first psychologist four times in june and july of 2009 mm-hmm. uh gurney explains to him that uh zoe uh was laying there he walked up the stairs he looked at he, he looked i'm sorry <laughs> at her <laughs> with okay, a blank look uh, and uh he just did what he did. Yeah. I think it was probably it just seems like I don't know, a lot of times when you when you when you get into these crimes like this, they're in anger at the time mm-hmm. of the murder, but he's walking into her napping on the bed. Right. Yep. That seems kind of you know what I mean? Like to kind of go into the signs, it's almost like that would make more sense that he there was something telling him to do something other than him being extremely angry at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Does that make sense? It's the whole thing's just weird, like honestly. In his own yeah. words, in his own words, um the last couple of days she had been at my heels. I misread it. I got arrogant rather than loving and nurturing. I had such a problem with women that this is how it finally came out. Yeah, but that happens for a lot of people and they don't end up killing them. Right. Well, and and funny you say that. He goes, "You don't kill people. I knew it was wrong." so weird he knew but he clearly lashed out and even denies that his recent sexual that her recent sexual encounter with the other man played any real role in him killing her Mm. but he can deny it but i don't know i i I would still speculate that it probably set him over the edge because what what did she do anything else that would make him do that you know what i mean i mean i doubt it I think he's just making shit up at this point because, like, when I went to see him, he started, like, putting on this, like, whole creepy vibe and stuff and, like, told me that he did it because the signs or something told him to, like, free her because she doesn't really like this world and needs to move on to, like, another plane. I mean, he also says things that that Zoe had hurt him a lot and Mm -hmm. deflated him. I think Uh, he needs to be examined by someone else because it seems like he's either playing it up or there's mm -hmm. something genuinely wrong because that doesn't sound cool And he's always saying, you know, he's saying things like he's sick of, you know, playing these games with with women. It it definitely shows signs of anger towards women. I wonder how his his relationship was. I know we're kind of getting into this like his Dr. Phil, but, you know. With for you know, looking back at past well, episodes we've done, what was his life just, with his mother or any of that? Just reading the, I was so sick of it. Like every, like every effing girlfriend I've ever had, every effing woman, blah blah blah, talking about talking down about women. It just seems like he sees relationships as a whole in a negative, in a negative connotation. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Like, no, I can see where you're where you're getting that. Still though, I mean, why why would you why kill her? Right. Just, right. Why are you even at why why is she at your house right. even? If it's you know like not I mean? exclusive, you know, move on. Chad, you're very move negative. <laughs> at least at this point. <laughs> now in November of two thousand nine, uh Chad tells a forensic pathologist that he'd been listening to a particular band music. I wonder what that was. No, I don't know. I wish I knew. Marilyn Manson. No, Everyone um, blames Marilyn Manson. He was no. not. Everyone blames Marilyn Manson. He actually listened to decent stuff, so it was probably something. Define okay. decent. I don't know. It was like metal and stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> and not right. like shitty stuff. But oh, what okay. he's saying is basically that the lyrics and the music were pushing him in this direction. We're telling him to. Oh, so it's like the people who blame Doom for Columbine. Hmm. Yeah. Well, they were that that they were. I mean, how would you explain that? That the lyrics were somehow he was getting something out of the lyrics. I mean, unless saying... he was listening to Cannibal Corpse, I don't really know. <laughs> no, it's like 
wow, this is what you got to do for the music. I wonder if it was like, oh, I was listening to it backwards, you know, all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what they said about the Grateful Dead, you play it backwards and get, get the satanic message. But no, it was probably something else. You know what? He was upset and he's listening to this. And sometimes when you're in a negative state of mind, you'll find something negative in a number of things. Or maybe he was getting something from it. Maybe. Maybe there was something there that was, but why? What kind of evil force would be pushing him the direction to do something like that. This is going to be underlying problems. Might be the same one that's making the lights flicker. I know. Here. Maybe. Well, we had to turn them off halfway through because... Yeah, we're sitting in the dark right now. Yeah, it got very intimate all of a sudden. <laughs> Sheds, an intimate setting. Because I think something's haunting the shed. Yeah, it's Someone all, is pissed. It's all the shit we talk about, dead people. I want to see the lights flicker back on. That would freak me, too. me out. So, Jake, why don't you take us to uh, August 13th in... Uh, in the, the, the period of time between August 13th and November 12th. Okay, so somewhere between August 13th and November 12th of 2010, uh, it was about a year after uh, Chad had killed Zoe, he was examined by another psychiatrist that was hired by the defense. He told the psychiatrist that his spiritual advisor, quote-unquote, instructed him to set aside everything in his life in order to go on a journey with him and that this was the ultimate test. Uh, he also stated that he did not believe that he was killing the victim because they shared eternal life and that he and the victim had shared these beliefs and values and that he was performing a ritual of purification for eternal life by strangling, beheading, or fire. Yeah, that's what he basically told me. What do you take on that? He's fucking crazy. That's what I take you know, on that. There's all sorts. It takes all sorts to make a community, but this one should be locked up behind bars is what I'm saying. Right. Well, what I mean, what, no, I'm saying what do you... What exactly does this mean? I mean, where where's he getting this from? Do you know? Did he say anything? Probably about... from D and D. Like honestly, <laughs> what? Really? No, well, do, he do plays. You... Are and you he... saying D and D causes murders? No. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't killed anyone yet. <laughs> but do you think? Uh, yeah. Is, is he the playing it up? Is he playing this up? Is he trying to really push this? Maybe with the I story really do. Here. Yeah. Listen, how crazy I am. I am. I wasn't in my right state of mind. I'm not right now. I'm listening to the story I'm giving you. Is that what's happening here? You think? It's yeah, on... I think so. It sounds like he's trying to found a religion. <laughs> he, he's got such a big push behind it right i think it could have happened can he get tax uh tax exemption from jail maybe he would have been one of those like weird like cult gurus like with right. all these like young very young hipster girls following him can't you see him as a televangelist right now like that joel olstein guy no no <laughs> no <laughs> no as this is all going on on may 10th uh, Gurney then files a motion to suppress evidence obtained from a search of his laptop. Now, remember, he allowed them into his motel. They took his laptop, his cell phone. And his uh, iPod. All this stuff. Oh, my God. I remember my iPod. Jake, touch. you'll agree. He's got good taste, at least, yeah, right? At least he rides Apple products. Okay. <laughs> That's what you need, but, Adam. But so there, there must have been something on that. Oh, there was. Yeah. Well, can, well, well what, uh, what do we have? Oh, wow. It was like a snuff film of like a woman getting decapitated. And that's what he was trying to like have them not see. Was it? it <laughs> so it wasn't the actual video of anything happening. No, yeah, it was not like well, not with Zoe or anything, but it was one that he probably got off of. I don't know some shock site. Wow. All right. So this yeah. is something that he's had thoughts of in the past. So by suppressing that, because that's the kind of evidence that would come out there that would make it look like this was a premeditated thing. This is something you're into, man. You're something you're into. You have this know. on your phone. Well, that's what the, that's what I haven't killed anybody yet. But against him, yeah. they would say that, though. You know what I mean? The uh, yeah, the cops would say that. The police would say that. The authorities would say, "Look, you got this on your phone. This is obviously a fantasy of yours, and that's why." No, did they end up allowing this to go into court? Or? Um, well, let me see here. I gotta look into that. I don't know. Let me see here. All right, so the court did grant Gurney's motion to suppress evidence with respect to the iPod. So what does that mean? So I guess like the... So they couldn't get into his iPod. Yeah, no, okay. no head girl. All right. So, the, wow, I wonder why. You Maybe because they, it had a lock code on it. They probably couldn't figure it out. Well, no, you would think that they would want that to be in, in court. You well, would right, think that but back to, in, to be like maybe like this a little bit of a, well, right, this but, is what this guy's into. Well, right, but back in 2010, was Apple giving the, go giving the government access to people's shit? Uh, because probably, there, there was know. actually a point where it, they were like working together and mm -hmm. if the government wanted in they would give them a way in 
Now, he also filed a motion to suppress evidence that was obtained from his Facebook account uh, as a result of an allegedly defective search warrant, which was uh, denied by the courts. Mm. Uh, no evidence related relating to Gurney's Facebook account was ultimately admitted or referred to uh, at trial. 2009 Facebook. Does but anyone why, else remember that? What was on his Facebook? I'm wondering. Do you so, know? So that I'm not sure. Maybe that is where like the the film was, and maybe the iPod was the music. It's not really clear. I don't have a bunch of info on it, but those were like kind of the two pieces he was trying to suppress that I know for a fact. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, this will take us probably to the... Or maybe conversations he was having back and forth via Facebook. It's kind of interesting here, you know, because he's very similar to a lot of other uh, killers. And even with the accident, because some of like uh, some of the other ones that we've covered, they had traumatic uh, dra- uh, mm-hmm. tra- drama, brain trauma, damage. brain trauma at some point in their life to their head. So yeah. that can totally change you. Um, so all this is taken into consideration is mental health, uh, some of the other underlining information, and of course, what he does. And this takes us, Jake, to our verdict on February 4th of 2011. On February 4th of 2011, the court found him guilty of murder and arson as he was charged. Uh, the court entered a thoughtful and thorough written judgment with comprehensive findings of fact. All of this very professional sounding language. It is very professional. Um, oh, the court solid. also found <laughs> that the evidence indicated that this was a domestic violence homicide and that Gurney was reacting to the victims having been intimate with another man when intentionally or knowingly he had strangled her. I mean, you got to figure things don't look good for him. No, absolutely not. You and know? he knew what he did because he admitted to it, number one. And number two, he, was, he, he, let, he had all these signs. You know what I mean? It's kind it, of interesting. You almost feel... It sounds weird, but you almost feel bad for the guy in a way. So the court did not find credible evidence not that he totally. had suffered. totally. Okay, listen. <laughs> okay, listen. So the court had not found credible evidence that he had suffered from any psychiatric or medical condition that had supported him, I guess, being criminally responsible, I don't know, by reason of insanity. Basically, they said he was he was straight and he of did it mind. and whatever. Then right. I retract my past statement. If they found him of sane mind, yeah. Then you know you can see signs of things. You can make them sound more so than than you than they actually are. I mean he he had reason to kill her. There was motive. You know what I mean? There was uh, yeah. He was jealous, and you can see where don't he be in an open been. relationship if you're going to be jealous. Well, I don't know if they were necessarily in an open. Maybe they, maybe he, in his mind, they were not in an open relationship. Well, then lock her down. Don't put be a, ro- a bitch. Put a ring on that <laughs> finger. Don't be a bitch. Put a ring on that finger. Don't be a bitch. So, but it's kind of uh, I don't know. How do you feel about this one, Jurgen? I mean, this is a. Uh, you knew the guy personally, right. so you know what I mean. I know, like, in hindsight, it all makes sense. Like after I started. When I went to visit him, it all became pretty clear. Well, like, where was he when you went to visit? So him? So I went down to Warren to visit him, and that's our state prison. Here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he definitely was like trying to act crazy with me when I was there. It, he definitely was not the same Chad. It was like a very uncomfortable situation. Like when you're there, it's very different from when you're like visiting. Like when I went to go see Buddy in County, um, it's not generally with the phone unless they have some sort of restriction you are like stuck at a table with this person in an open room with tons of like other inmates for three hours and what was that like what did he have to say um i don't know he we just talked about random stuff did he talk about what he had done at all he talked a little bit he he admits it like that he had done it and everything he's pretty Um, open about it yeah he's pretty open that's when he was telling me he you know did it for spiritual reasons he told me that zoe's parents actually visit him and they talk about this stuff i don't know how true that is but that's what he told me like that her family visits him quite a bit like physically Um, or is he saying like you you know what i'm saying like 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 visitation um, so huh. I don't know if that's accurate or him just... I hope they're writing down everything he says. Yeah. Oh, of course. I'd imagine that stuff's monitored. Yeah. yeah, I would hope so. And then we just like talked about random stuff, like we talked about magic and D&D and stuff like that. Oh, how's the weather today? Right. But like... I haven't been outside in three years. He's been outside. He got me the bird feather. That's oh, right. That's yeah. Jake, where you been? But he like... He was... I've been drinking. This is like number... <laughs> 67 right but he would tell me that he would like to try to like fuck with the psychiatrist that he had at the prison did and he, like he did it on purpose yes on purpose why 
like to you come know off as crazy right okay, well, uh, but then he's but, telling me all this too but, but what's the end goal of that i guess is my question because like if you want to get out and you want you may not even want to be it's a better not gonna person, happen but... he like attacks guards in there and like i stopped talking to him maybe he just thinks life is a game at this point i think so because he's not getting out he's no. like in there for 60 so yeah. no he was shit. sentenced to uh, 50 years 50? for the murder yeah. and 25 50. years for arson uh but all but 10 years suspended mm -hmm. and four years probation to be served consecutively to the sentence on the murder conviction. Yeah. That's a lot of talk there for basically saying he's going to get out when he's fairly old. Right. Fairly but, old. Very old. Dude, he's going to be dust. He'll be at, how old was he when he, he was 27? He was 27, but like the trial took a while. But yeah. So 50 plus 25, 75 plus 27, that's uh, what, 100 and something. No. I can't math right now. I can't math right now either. But like, yeah, we stopped talking because that's when Buddy was going to Warren. And he wanted to know all of Buddy's info and then got mad at me because I wouldn't give it. And uh, That sounds like he's trying to set Buddy up. Yeah, yeah so then like I like me. cut contact and gave no info. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. call. Wow. Good I wonder call. why. I wonder why. I wonder asked. why. Yeah, but mm. why? I wonder what you, happened. You know someone. Why don't you ask him? I know, right? <laughs> right? This is interesting. What do you think? I mean, once this all, once the gun smoke settled and he'd been convicted and all that, how are you feeling about this? I mean, like... It was weird for a while. I don't think about it a lot these days. Um, you know, it just was like a decent enough story for the show. But decent enough. I think it's, it's been great. It's pretty wild. I've been, I've been enjoying it yeah. the whole time. But so, I don't know. He, he's pissed off a lot of people. I definitely put it out there for people to share their stories with me. And really nobody wanted to. We know he's that, definitely uh, pissed a lot of people off. We know that the people in... Well, or we've heard that people in the state prison are going to be getting access to like iPads or yes. maybe not iPads, but tablets really? or something. Yeah. So I was wow. talking with Buddy and they're going to be um, doing Chrome a system books. where it's either Chromebooks <laughs> or some sort of tablet that has like texting ability. So he could text my phone if he wanted to. That does not sound like a good idea. I wonder if they can download stories from the shed. Oh, if they would listen, that might be our biggest market. Sorry if we roast you. Well, you set yourself up for it for a bit. Yeah, I mean, if things, you decide things, you're going to go to worse. if you just decide you're going to kill someone and go to prison, it's kind of on you. But right. this is definitely an interesting story to me. Um, this is somebody he went to. Now he's a number of years older than I am. Um, Not me because I'm old, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he he he's yeah. what about seven years older than me. But he he went to Oak Hill for a while. Yeah, he went to Oak Hill. And uh, I I don't necessarily remember him from that but i do remember him from being around yeah um like the first time i met him uh, was at the litchfield fair and then like there was the reconnection over at bull moose but he's definitely around especially if you were into like the scene of going to like metal shows and stuff so do you think they, they got it right here with this one you think that they they nailed the story down this is a guy because this is what what he this is what got him the sentencing he got. Right. They convicted him based on the fact that they believe him to be a guy that was pissed off at a woman who he believed cheated mm -hmm. on him and hurt him, because that's what he said. Right. She hurt me deeply and this and that. Uh, reacted in a fit of anger, killed her, went to Old Orchard Beach to cool off. Mm -hmm. Once once he figured out what he had done, he came clean to a friend, and then he turned himself into the authorities. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it went down. And, and he's yeah. been... But after that, he started playing the crazy card. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. Um, to try to, I guess, get some kind of immunity from this. But do right. you think that the authorities nailed it down right? This I time? think so. Fortunately so. Um, geez, it's a crazy one, Jake. It is. What do you think? You got anything else to add? No. I've been enjoying this ride. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I didn't read the notes at all this week. I've just <laughs> no been way. so ridiculously yeah. busy. I mean, I didn't either. Adam did a great job putting them together. I kind of just wung it from what we had in my memories of him, and I think we covered it pretty well. No, I think you guys did too, and I just want to thank you both for carrying me through this story because this has been one hell of a ride. <laughs> Are there any podcasting awards? I don't know, but I think, <laughs> I, think, I think if anyone deserves them, you two do. That's great. Where's your golf clap when you need it? Oh, uh, well, I would love to play that, but we had to unplug the laptop because of recording issues, blah, blah, blah. Instead, we'll go right to our social media. You can I find agree. us on Facebook, which a lot of people have at Stories from the Shed, uh, which is great. Thank you. Yeah, we've uh, gotten a lot of new likes this week, and thank you for everyone that has listened and everyone that has shared our posts and everyone that has been following us. Instagram, which is Stories from the Shed. YouTube, Stories from the Shed podcast. Twitter, at Stories from Shed. 
Uh, you can also hit us up at our Gmail account, sftspodcast at gmail.com. Send us story suggestions. Send us feedback. We love feedback. We love it. Yeah, Absolutely keep them going because there's a lot of stories that people tell us about that I've never even heard of. Yep. Uh, so Absolutely. we do love that. We do. And we will email you back. We'll talk. We always do. So uh, we try. We try. We try very hard. A lot of times it's me sitting at my desk at my house and I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit up Adam over Slack and I'll be like, hey, we have this email. What do we say? And we'll figure it out and whatever. But it works. So keep them coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jurgen, for coming thank back on. Thank you for on. having me back on. We'll get yeah, you back absolutely. on real soon. You're All great. Right. Appreciate well, it. And thank you guys for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.